So congratulations on this project, uh, Manda Hollywood. It was a very entertaining watch. Um, let, let's get into a little bit of how you made this for $10,000. Yeah, give and take. It was a uh, definitely a micro budget film. Um, obviously, you know when we were when you release a film, there's kind of other um, additional costs and stuff like that. But yeah, the production budget was around there, ten maybe fifteen. But like, yeah, it was very uh, very low budget, um, and that's um, just what we kind of had to work with. We just um, started, you know, kind of shooting. Uh, you know, we shot it on a cell phone. So just keeping the cost uh, as minimal as possible because we didn't have the money was, uh, was key. But we also kind of used that as a way. We didn't want to like pretend it was a bigger movie. We wanted to really soak in the fact that it was like a kind of, um, <clears throat> you know, a movie that was kind of made with, you know, duct, duct tape and elbow grease. Mm -hmm. And in many ways, it kind of helps, I think, uh, tell the story of a more like, uh, you know, this is made from people on the, you know, on the streets, you know what I mean? It's not necessarily a movie that's like, has big money behind it. It's, yeah, it's more of a kind of decent, like a, you know, Francis Ford Coppola talks a lot about uh, uh, the democratization of film. So mm -hmm. it's cool that, you know, I think it, it hope, I hope that it have, shows people, hey, you can go out, you know, and, and make a movie for, for, the, for a cheap budget, you know? Uh, so what is your film background? Since you shot this on a camera, on a phone's ca uh yeah a camera phone um it doesn't look like it was shot on a camera phone it it, it has oh, a really yeah. good quality to yeah. it so what what's your film background is, is that you know such a great quality yeah so i i started um making more uh like experimental films and what i would do i didn't once again kind of had a difficulty raising money so what I would do is I would <clears throat> take a lot of like a uh, stock footage from like the forties and fifties, like anti uh, communist uh, propaganda stock footage and like other types of propaganda footage. And I would kind of tell stories out of it, code with a little bit of humor and like experimental editing. Mm -hmm. So I would kind of originally started doing more of that stuff and short films and stuff like that. And I think I utilized that helped me kind of utilize some of the uh, editing style in it um you know because it's a very kind of fast cut very like very fluid film mm -hmm. so i think my background and some of like piecing together large swaths of, of of footage to tell a story helped me a little bit kind of construct some of it uh, because there's we were obviously able to shoot a lot you know a very talented uh cast that were a lot of improv actors and we kind of did stuff on the fly with my you know with my producing partner chris blim my writing partner, uh, Blim and Marcus, like we were able to kind of like get a lot of things in there. And then it was kind of just about, you know, cutting it up and, and kind of making it more like in its presentable kind of psychedelic way, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The cast is pretty awesome. And that's a pretty large cast for such a small budget. How, how did you manage that? Well, you know, luckily I think, uh, Early on, it was kind of, I think, a smart move that, you know, Blim and I were like, okay, well, let's cast our, our friends. We were fortunate to have extremely talented, uh, you know, actor friends. So with that, it made it a little bit easier to kind of be like, hey, can we shoot this day? Like, it wasn't like a rigid shooting schedule with like maybe someone like uh, Blim and I when and a few of the other characters it was, but like, because it was so spread out, we were able to kind of like cherry pick, okay, maybe we'll shoot this person's stuff here. So thankfully everybody kind of knew we weren't working with the budget and we didn't really have money. So everybody was really kind of trusted us that we would make something kind of cool. And that's all you can really ask for from a, you know, a director or a producer or a writer is, is like a, a cast that kind of trusts what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I'm so, I'm still shocked that they did it. Cause like sometimes we wouldn't even like have, you know, like a, like, the script wouldn't be fully be there. We'd be like, hey, this is the essence of the scene. And they didn't have a lot of context for what was going on. So I, I really appreciate that, that they were kind of trusting to kind of be like, oh, okay, well, they'll, they have some plan for this, I think. You know what I mean? So what kind of phone did you shoot on? Um, it was an iPhone 8 Plus. Uh -huh. So it was like a, yeah, so since then, they've become a lot better. Um, but uh, and we didn't actually shoot it. In, you can shoot 4K in that film, but we didn't shoot 4K because I wouldn't be able, I didn't have enough money to have a computer that can take in 
4K and be able to cut the way I cut. So it was actually even just HD. It wasn't even 4K. So the phone, I think, you know, I think it did its, it did its job. You know what I mean? That's kind of how I see it. With the iPhone's uh, limited space, uh, how often were you dumping footage onto a computer or a hard drive? So every day after we would shoot, I would spend like three hours transcoding it all and then, or dumping it and then transcoding it to an Apple ProRes 422 and then putting it in the folder and all that stuff. So it was, it was so annoying. <laughs> but yeah, so every day I would, uh, sometimes I would do it because we would shoot like 10, 20 minutes or like two or three hours only in a day. And then the next day we'd shoot two or three. So I'd sometimes wait like, oh, okay, I'll just do like a couple days in one, you know, uh, uh footage dump but no it was like every night we shot i would go and you know ugh, yeah and you're going and dump it all and then transcode it all to apple pros for two too so it can cut smoother and all that stuff so well it definitely shows that you have passion for this um so how did this story come to you why did you want to uh make a story like this in such a small budget so <clears throat> uh, it all kind of goes back to like 2014 uh, there was a screening of Mondo Hollywood, which is a 1967 cult classic. That's a little bit more like a documentary. Ours is obviously much more fictionalized and narrative. But Paul Thomas Anderson presented um, the original Mondo Hollywood, which I recommend everybody watch. You know, a big reason why we made this is kind of a, it's an homage to that movie. And that kind of gave me this idea to like, oh, what if we did a more modern kind of version like this and I kind of had this weird thing where it's like Titans, Weirdos, Dreamers, and then, which is the three, where the three chapters. And I was originally going to do it in VR. So I shot VR footage for it, but I didn't really like VR. I'm more of like a film person. I thought maybe it would be similar, but it was just some, I think. I, I know some people who excel in it and do really well, and I think there's a future for it. But it just, so, and then, um, you know, Marcus uh, helped me kind of write some of the or wrote the narration for the this whole thing that was supposed to be this like weird documentary kind of thing but and then when I met Blim who's kind of like my my partner in crime here on this movie we both did this movie together it's like he really like broke open the whole thing and we worked a lot on making it more fictionalized so we kind of used his character as this he plays Boyle as a way to kind of like you know, he's kind of the through line throughout the movie. And then along the way, we all kind of like wrote with these little vignettes of characters and kind of kept structure in mind, you know, although it seems a little crazy, there is like buried structure underneath it. And that's kind of how it came about. It was just originally this thing that I was going to make, but then it kind of morphed once I met uh, more people and especially Blim, and we kind of started making it more of a narrative film as opposed to this original conception that was like more of a documentary VR, all these weird ideas, but eventually it kind of turned into this. So where are people going to be able to watch this? How are you going to distribute it? Uh, so it's available right now on Amazon Prime, uh, just a couple bucks to rent. And then uh, it'll soon be on like Apple TV. And then uh, in November, it'll be on uh, uh, free on Prime, I believe. Um, if, and perhaps maybe like Hulu or Netflix, we're waiting to find out. But right now, Amazon Prime, you can buy it or rent it for a couple bucks. And then... Um, yeah, it, it, that's uh, that's just the, that's the ideal spot to so just check it out. That's mostly where it is. Awesome. Um, so uh, where can people find you on social media? Where, where can they see the, the film's journey? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely check out uh, Assembly Line Entertainment on Instagram. Uh, you know, Good Hammer is another is Blim's company. Check out them on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter at Yannick Ambrose 88 um yeah that's that's pretty much it and then uh for mondo obviously i forgot mondo just mondo hollywood land is the instagram you know we're we're kind of rolling dishing out some more like behind the scenes stuff and all that kind of stuff as the as we hit more platforms so yeah check that stuff out awesome and uh, what's up next for you well i actually made a uh i made a film that was over a few years, that was an anthology of a lot of different sh little shorts I made. So I put them into one collective piece. That's kind of this like uh, look at um, the rise of fascism in the, the West and like um, Wall Street and war and all these kind of big topical things. And I put them together in this feature and it, and it came out like in March, 2020, right when COVID hit. So it kind of had a weird release. <laughs> so now I'm, uh, I'm kind of just re 
repushing that out a little bit. And that's called money fascism and some sort of acid. And you can watch that on Amazon prime too. And then, uh, then, yeah, then I got, you know, a lot of other kind of little, like uh, some little, some a little bit bigger films going on with assembly line as a producer and stuff. One is an Ecuadorian documentary that my friend Gallo directed that I produced uh, called legends of Teos. And that's a, uh, really cool documentary uh that's like about exploration in, in ecuador and it's it's really cool so uh yeah check that out if you can too that's also on amazon prime awesome well thank you very much for your time uh mondo hollywood land is a pretty awesome film i do recommend people watch it it is a much higher quality than what i expected hearing that it was shot on knife uh, on a phone cool man okay thanks for your time and i hope you have a great rest of your day you too man